You ready? Let's keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. You're not even gonna have an intro. You're just gonna run it on the same thing. Yo, what's up, Patreon? So, dude, we are doing Interstellar today because you guys voted for it. Honestly. Yeah, and you said so. Right. So, I've never seen this movie, man. I know it's about like time dilation and stuff. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything for you. But it was kind of weird going into this because I felt like maybe I needed to explain it to you. But we decided we didn't want to do that. Mrs. October said that she definitely doesn't want me to do that. She said if she feels dumb, she'll feel dumb. But if I have to pause it, then I'll stop. And if I feel dumb, guys, because I'm probably not gonna get it either. But I'm interested in this field. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think. This stuff's interesting and genuinely i don't really so ugh, so when i that's really why i haven't watched it that's just no, 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 that, to be honest that's not fair you when, don't find this disinteresting i know but so when you start talking about that those big words i just i'm like you guys said this one so i'm gonna trust you <laughs> i don't know much about interstellar there's a difference between space interstellar space means you out there two hours 49 but you know what it's gonna go by so fast is it gonna be interstellar if this is as good as gladiator i'm here <laughs> was a farmer like everybody else back then of course he didn't start that way shout out to the farmers you're a farmer out there Come god bless here, you <laughs> I got this. yeah we need you thank you so much i thought you were the ghost yeah, no such thing as ghost but grandpa says you can get ghosts <laughs> of course he does were you dreaming about the crash Hit you back in bed, Murph. So he crashed a plane, now he has PTSD. PTSD. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like her name Murph too. It's mm -hmm. cool. One. I just think of Brittany Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> I just think of Murph Dog. I don't know what that is. We had acres of corn, but uh mostly we had dust. Oh no. I guess I can't describe it. It was just constant, just that steady blow of dirt. Well, what Dang. Set the table? I'm just telling me that you're afraid of some ghost. No, you gotta go further. You gotta record the facts, analyze, get to the how and the why, then present your conclusions. So she Tell thinks she's got a ghost in her room. Up. Like, for real. They're saying it's the last harvest for okra. Mm. Ever. She's planting corn like the rest of us. That sucks. Well, nice to that Miss Hanley. She's single. Yeah, you better like corn. What's that supposed to mean? repopulating the earth start pulling your way young man okay so guys their earth's dying and so it's just dusty AF. yeah that oh, dust is seconds. just the earth dying like that's i guess yeah uh -huh. that would suck to be in a dusty crusty Better. earth though mm -hmm. what'd you do murph murphy's law what <laughs> <laughs> can't go wrong we'll go wrong get the patch kit that would suck for that little girl i'm still just charmed by that murphy's law what's going on murph <laughs> Murphy's law doesn't mean that something bad will happen. What it means is that whatever can happen will happen. True. Never thought about it like that. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my God. Get in. What about the flat tire? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. It's an Indian Air Force drone. Solar cells can power an entire farm. What the oh, heck? wow. They want it. Oh, it's going to crash, maybe? It looks like a plane to me. No, that's a drone. He's whipping that thing in. I know, and he ran through a barbed wire fence. Almost got it. Don't stop. Dad. Oh my god. Oof. What do you do? Did he hack it? No way. So right, he your just name knows in the sky. things, huh? Because he was in the he was in the army or the military, Air Force. Right, you don't have a computer like that unless you're your business. You know what I'm saying? We're playing Call of Duty. Right I could jump down. <laughs> oh my God! How long do you think it's been up there? Delhi Mission Control went down, same as ours, ten years ago. <laughs> that thing had been up there for ten years. I would worry, be worried it would explode. Well, Coop, you have to be realistic. Tom score simply isn't high enough so he can do better what if you told him he's got to adapt getting out you're telling me it takes two numbers to measure your own ass but only one to measure my son's future you're a well-educated <laughs> man cool okay well right now we don't need more engineers so we ran out of food the world that's why they're all farmers, farmers. okay 
Miss Hanley's here to talk about Murph. Uh-oh. Murph, she brought this in to show the other students the section on the lunar landings. We've replaced them with the corrected versions, explaining how the Apollo missions were fake to bankrupt the Soviet Union. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Struck a nerve with this dude. You don't believe we went to the moon? You know what? There's a game tomorrow night. I think I'll take her to that. Just to put it in her face because she doesn't believe in the, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I got you suspended. <laughs> what? I got you suspended. <laughs> I mean, if they're destined to be farmers anyways, why why even go to school? Right. Just go start farming. That's kind of rude. The They didn't give them a chance. They just said, you're 15, farmer. You can't improve. Sorry. I think there's what, not a lot of people left. Yeah. Nothing special about which book. I've been working on it, like you said, in case the ghost is trying to communicate. The books are really I'm following. Mm-hmm. Morse. Dots and dashes. Used. Oh, I know what Morse code is, Murph. I just don't think your bookshelf's trying to talk to you. She's so smart. <laughs> or is she? She's talking to a bookshelf. But she knows Morse code. What the heck? Right, yeah. I hear your meeting at the school didn't go so well. <laughs> I know that guy from somewhere. Well, we used to look up in the sky and wonder. Now we just look down and worry about our place in the dirt. We're like that, too, where we are. Mm hmm. In my day, we had real ball players. Who are these bumps? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, in my day, people were too busy fighting over food to even play baseball. Oh, that's Pop the big leagues now. Game. Oh, jeez. <laughs> no one's eating. Dang, what the heck? What is it, like a dust, like a dust storm? And they're acting so calm, so it seems like it's frequent. Yeah, like normal, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a, when you see lightning, you have to evacuate the stadium. But that guy should have caught the ball, though, because that's an error in his stats. No, it's not. He didn't touch it. Facts. Facts <laughs> Tom Murph. That's a hit. Yeah. They seem well prepared for the dust, though. Man, that would be tough. Our jobs would be gone, obviously, because there wouldn't be enough people to support all that. And that dust would destroy our stuff. Mm hmm Ah, oh, man. Oh. That sucks. I wouldn't leave my junk open. I'd never <laughs> open my window. The ghost. Grab your pillow. What? Sleep in the town. The way it's falling? Oh my gosh. So this movie has like a supernatural element to it? Potentially. What? It's not a ghost. It's gravity. You want to clean that up? But why? <laughs> he said, gotta move on. Dust storms happen. It's not Morse, Murph. It's binary. Thick is one, thin is zero. That's smart. That's some computer codes. So he wrote one zero zero one one based on the lines. You got some coordinates out of it. But you don't know what you're gonna find. And that is why I can't take you. <laughs> God. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. She would have never got away with that in my car, boy. <laughs> I'd have caught you. She hit like Frodo. This music is crazy too, man. This is insane. I know. I like their relationship. Those coordinates led him to a what? I think this is the end of the road. Didn't you bring the bolt cutters? That's my girl. <laughs> oh. Step away no, no, from no, no, the no, no, fence! No, no, no. Oh my gosh. Not armed. My daughter's in the car. Uh oh. Don't be afraid. He done found like a top secret government place or something. And he had bolt cutters and everything. <laughs> About to break in that thing. Where's my daughter? You had the coordinates for this facility marked on your map. Where did you get those coordinates? Where's my daughter? Go. Don't make me take you down again. Where did you find those coordinates? I think I'll turn you into an overqualified vacuum cleaner. No, you won't. That thing's oh, weird, ain't it? I know. It looks like a Minecraft uh, thing. His name's Tars. And I'm scared for my daughter and I want her by my side. You give me that. I'll tell you anything you want to know. I used to like that movie a lot. Me too. So good. <laughs> so good. Your daughter is fine. I don't know anything about you. I don't know anything about this place. Yes, you do. Then how'd you find it, buddy? <laughs> oh. Professor Brian. Explain to me how you found this facility. It was gravity. 
No, I'm real happy because you're excited about gravity, but <laughs> <laughs> don't you know who we are, Coop? No, Professor, I don't. You know, my father, Professor. They're the Brown. government, bro. Stay away. We're NASA. Oh, cool. The same NASA you flew for. Oh, we know a little something about you. So NASA must be extinct. Yeah, because all these. They shut you down, sir. Yeah, government funded programs are gone. Because public opinion wouldn't allow spending on space exploration. Not when you're struggling to put food on the table. Okay. Wheat. Seven years ago, okra this year. Now there's just corn. That sucks, man. And we're growing. The corn will die soon. Our air gets less and less oxygen. Oh, and your damn. daughter's generation will be the last to survive on Earth. Dang. We're not meant to save the world. We're meant to leave it. Whoa. Interstellar. They got to go get Interstellar out there. Makes sense. Rangers. The last oh, nice Mars. of our one versatile ship in orbit you sent people out there looking for a new home the lazarus missions we need a pilot and this is the mission that you were trained for we had no choice but something sent you here they right chose you well, who's they dominus they divine intervention or something out near saturn a disturbance of space time and it leads where another galaxy oh wow there ain't no shot a wormhole is not a naturally occurring phenomenon someone placed it there they that's some technology right there. Mm -hmm. They've put potentially habitable worlds right within our reach. We sent people into it oh. 10 years ago. Dang. They stretched out like spaghetti. 12 possible worlds, 12 ranger launches carrying there they go. the bravest humans ever to live, led by the remarkable Dr. Man. And what if the world didn't show promise? Hence the bravery. Oh, man. So they sacrificed themselves. Well, Data transmission back through the wormhole is rudimentary. It's give us some clue as to which worlds have potential. And one system shows promise. And one, that's a bit of a long shot, isn't it? One system with three potential worlds? A long shot. So if we find a home, then what? That's the long shot. There's a plan A and a plan B. Did you notice anything strange about the launch chamber? The planet's dying 48 years ago or something like that an unnaturally occurring wormhole, which is not the same as a black hole. It's a wormhole. Mm -hmm. uh, the same concept of bending a sheet of paper. One occurred non-naturally in the ominous. They placed it there and people went through and was trying to find planets through the wormhole. And basically they're saying that they're going to go to a system that has three stars, potentially. Well, they, said, three planets they said there was 12 life. planets. 12 of them went out, each of them to one planet. They went for the sleep. If they were rescued, that means that they survived. Three of them survived. Or something like that so three of them could survive because of the i guess the atmosphere maybe it wasn't great so they have to go try to try again well or they crazy or the reason why he's going is because there's three like kind of close to each other so they know it's not like just a hoax that you can only survive on like one mm -hmm. i don't know man we'll figure it out plan a that harnessing gravity was real so i started working on the theory and but you haven't solved it yet that's why there's plan b the problem is gravity how to get a viable amount of human life off the planet. Plan B, population bomb. Over 5,000 fertilized eggs, weighing in at just under 900 kilos. Transpermia. Now what about the people here? You just, that's why plan A is a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. <laughs> Find us a new home. And by the time you return, I will have solved the problem of gravity. So how long is it going to take? Yeah, I know. That seems like a hard problem to solve. <laughs> and you're kind of up there, old man. Our mankind was born on Earth. Was never meant to die here. Man, so many quotes coming from this movie. So I know. Far. <laughs> Probably all right, but you gotta make things right with Murph. I will. Without making promises you don't know you can keep. Man, that's tough. So her dad's about to go trying to find another planet to live on. I need to fix this before I go. I'll keep it broken so you have to stay. Oh. Murph, they chose me. You saw it. You're the one who led me to him. That poor little girl is gonna exactly feel guilty for that. Go. Mm -hmm. I figured out the message. Stay. One for you. One for me. When I'm up there in hypersleep or, or traveling near the speed of light, time's gonna change for me. And there's gonna run more slowly. Time dilation. I mean, by the time I get back, we hope we might even be the same age. You and me. That's so what? long. I have no idea when you're coming back. No idea. Oh! Why is it so sad, dude? Like, what is it about it? Is it the music or something? The situation? Well, this is brutal. I think it's because he's going on this long mission you. and she's not even like him by. It's. I love you forever, and I'm coming back. She'd have kept that little mystery to herself if she'd have known all that. 
But did someone plant that there for him today? Is that what it is? Wait, what is that? I don't know. It's something. How'd it go? I'm fine. Let's go, Tom. Hey, can I use your truck where you're gone? It means your truck. <laughs> I'll make sure they bring him back. Look after my kids, Donald. Donald said, yeah, I got it. You go save the world. Go for our main engine. Start T minus 10. Oh, that really hurt her. Nine. Oh. Seven. Six. Five. Main engine. Start. One. Booster ignition and. That'd be so scary, dude. Stage one separation. Oh, that little Stage machine. Did you see that little machine? Everybody good? Plenty of slaves for my robot colony? I gave him a humor setting so he'd fit in better with his unit. <laughs> What's your humor setting, Dodge? That's 100%. Let's bring it on down to 75, please. <laughs> separation. It'd be kind of weird with a robot making threats. It'd be kind of scary. Because you don't really know. <laughs> It's hard leaving everything. My kids, your father. We should learn to talk. And we're not to. <laughs> Just being honest. Hey, Tars, what's your honesty parameter? 90%. 90%. Absolute honesty isn't always the most diplomatic, nor the safest form of communication with emotional beings. Okay. <laughs> You're coming up on the endurance. Okay, taking control. Oh, it's like a docking station? You gotta be dang near perfect, don't you? Yeah, they seem really stressed out. Nice and easy, Doyle. Lock? Killed it. Target locked. Okay, helmet's on. Good job. By the end of this movie, we're going to be so in love with that robot. Now that thing scares the mess out of me. Does it? Yeah, it'll win you over. So Gollum's cute, but that thing, that thing gets you. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> all right, we're all set. All right, let's do it. That looks insane. That'd make me feel so nauseous, I think. It's like the ultimate Gravitron. Just not knowing like what's up and what's down. It looks good for your trajectory. We've calculated two years to Saturn. It's a lot of drama, me. <laughs> Look after my family, will you please, sir? We'll be waiting for you when you get back. So two years. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. That gets me hype every time I hear something like that. I see those in like hype pieces all the time. <laughs> really? Well, yeah, they did one for Tom Brady before, like going into the playoffs because you know he was really old. It was it was hype. I was he going to sleep. Planet first. That's so scary. He thought it was weird too. You don't think nature can be evil? Well, was the line evil because it rips a gazelle to shreds? I don't know, man. Cats torture mice for hours. Oh, just remember, Coop, you are literally wasting your breath. <laughs> They're going for a two-year sleep, right, to get to Saturn or Absolutely. something like that? Guitars? That's crazy. Let's go with that trajectory one more time. Why are you whispering? They can't hear you. <laughs> Dr. Brand and Edmund, they close? I wouldn't know. There's a 90% wouldn't know, a 10% wouldn't know. <laughs> I also have a discretion setting, Cooper. Oh, not a poker face, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> He just turns around like a human. So much personality. <laughs> I can't tell what the planet looks like. It's like a blue marble still. I know you're going to get this message. Professor Brands assured me that you're going to get it to you. Know that I love you. Oh, Aww. she wanted it to be him. Yeah. Hello, Murph. He sent you a message. Not interested. So where are they? Heading for Mars. The next time you hear from Cooper, they'll be coming up on Saturn. The ring planet. Crazy. I know. I used to think you could roller skate around that when I was little. Like it was like a solid surface. Mm -hmm. what you're yeah. It's just chunks of ice and rock and stuff, right? This movie is so interesting. I'm like loving every second of it. Just throwing that out there. Like if you're going to attach the name like cinematic to a movie, this is it, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I'm um, sorry, Coop. I asked Murph to say hi, but she's as stubborn as her old man. She's so mad. So we got a pretty good idea what we're going to find on the other side, huh? Guys, looks like we'll be approaching the wormhole in about three hours. Here it goes. Wormhole time. They've turned three-dimensional space into two dimensions, which turns a wormhole into two dimensions. A circle. What's a circle in three dimensions? A wormhole. Oh, a sphere. I mean. a sphere. <laughs> I'm falling on though, I promise. Thanks for that, Rom. I kind of get it now. I mean, I pictured a wormhole looking like maybe the inside of a toilet. I pictured a wormhole looking like a worm. 
everybody ready to say goodbye to our solar system? Here we go. I mean, that's like one of the ultimate experiences you could ever have. Right. Wow. And it's so risky because how many times really can you test that? The controls won't work here. To them, it's all hypothetical. All you can do is record and observe. They're outside of space time right now, you just said. It's them. Don't, don't. Dang, they made it out. Where's Handshake? We're, we're here. I'm pretty confused about what she just shook hands with. A gray alien. That was they? They look like plasma aliens or something. Gargantua. Every hour we spend on that planet will be seven years back on Earth. Mm. That's a lot. Mm -mm, you can't do that. Okay, plan A does not work if the people on Earth are dead by the time we pull it off. That's why there's a plan B. <laughs> Cooper's right. We need to think about time as a resource, just like oxygen and food going down there's going to cost us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, which is here. Just outside of Miller's planet. Right. Okay. Cool. What if we, we take a wider orbit around Gargantua, parallel with Miller's planet, outside of this time shift to here? We save a lot of time. That right. Work. Cars factor in orbit of Gargantua. Conserve fuel and make sure we stay in range of Miller's planet. You got it? I wouldn't leave you behind, Dr. Brand. <laughs> Can I tell you what I think? What? The whole Gargantua, the planets that they know exist are orbiting it. Mm -hmm. And then, so they're trying to go to this one person's planet named Dr. Miller to get like what she has going on because she's sending like good communication. But to get there, they're going to lose time. Yeah, less time because of the plan that he had to basically get himself further away from the gravitational pull of the planet. Because the closer you are to that time, obviously, so an change. hour, seven years. Right. And he can't afford that because his kids. The idea is to do the mission to the best of their ability while also trying to save as much time as possible at this point. So instead, they're going to lose fuel mm -hmm. rather than time. I didn't catch every little detail of the plan, guys. I'm not going to lie. Like all the details, I'd have to watch this again. But. I think I get the general idea. He's trying to save him time by like slingshotting further away from the. But staying in range, like <coughs> just en just enough or something. Right, the big planet's gravitational pull. Detached. You just um, think it's gonna be so space loud. Space is a vacuum, no sound, no vibrations. The literal heart of darkness. There's Miller's planet. Wow. Goodbye, Ranger. That'd be a heck of a sight if you're on that planet. You think it looks like a moon to them? That thing out there? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. This is looks like someone's shining a flashlight in your eye. I'm gonna use the Ranger's aerodynamics to save some fuel. He's got them old school tricks. A little caution would go and get you killed. Cooper, it's too damn fast. I got this. He's gotten a wreck before, though. Here we go. Whoa. Just water. Satellite. They missed the continent. I'm gonna spiral down on top of it. Everybody hang on. 500 meters. He's a good pilot. Man's a bandit, ain't he? Oh, it floats. Go, 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 go. Seven years per hour here. Let's make it count. They probably peed their spacesuits over that. Absolutely. How annoying to go explore that with pee in your suit. I would be so scared to jump in there. She's gonna get eight. Or what if you just dissolve because it's toxic? She's walking in it. Oh, it's not even deep. I would have jumped in. <laughs> this way. 130% Earth gravity. Oh, wow. So it's like hard to move? That's like walking around with 30% of your weight, your body weight on your back. Same oh, no. Yeah. In the water with a suit on. That's tiring. Good beacon. Wreckage. Yeah, that's Deontay Wilder. Where's the, rest? Where's the mountains? No waves. Oh, they're about to get a tsunami. Oh, whoa. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. We need the recorder. They got to get out of there. Oh, it's getting closer. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Brand Doyle, back to the Ranger now. Jeez. Leaving without her data. What There's the somebody out there that would give it all up just to go surf that. You know what I'm saying? Come and get your ass back to the Ranger now. Brand, get back here now. Oh, she ain't going to make it. Oh my gosh. I can't make it. Go. Pace, go get her. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Yo, that's Missy Star you. That is. Go, go, go. Oh, so it was like super heavy. I get it. Come on. Mm. Yo, that machine is crazy, though. 
No. Bro. Get in there. Oh. oh my goodness. Oh, he made it. He made it. But Tars didn't make it. Oh, man. Tars did make it. Yes. It's been a good ride, everybody. They were close. So basically, all those waters took that land that she was on. Man, I don't really know what this planet is like. Oh, this is about to suck. So I guess they made it because the wave didn't break. Maybe. Like if the they wave just like kind of went over yeah, it. Yeah, if the like... wave breaks, they're going under. Hey, just rob them. Two water log. Let it drain. God damn it! Hey, how much time? Forty-five to an hour. Yeah. That's longer. Stuff life, huh? What's this gonna cost us, Brain? A lot. Decades. Oh no. Dude. On this planet's time, she just landed hours ago. She... Wow. That's crazy. Is there any possibility? Some clever way we could maybe I don't know, jump in a in a black hole. Came back to years. No shit. You, you can't go backwards in time. Time is relative. Okay. I wondered that too. Stretch and it can squeeze, but it goes one way. The beings that led us here. Could they be talking to us from the future? They are beings of five dimensions. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Did you catch that, babe? They're five dimensional beings. The ones that they when you become a parent, one thing comes really clear, and that's that you want to make sure your children feel safe. Cooper. I mean, dude, somebody Oscar better win an case. Oscar. This is crazy. Well, we I know. I'm wondering, did that guy make it? Case. The guy? Blow the cabin oh, yeah, no shot. The thrusters. We're going to spark it. Roger that. Locked. Depressurizing. Yeah, he goes that water as long as he gets crushed. He's, he's going. Oh, because it's so heavy? Yeah, it's 30% even more heavy. Wow. I would celebrate, but man, that was heavy, dude. There he is. That's what I'm telling you. Oh my. I've waited years. It's 23 years, four months, eight days. Oh, wow. Doyle. His daughter's 33. That guy right there is an absolute hero, dude. The theory and reality is different. And Miller. There's nothing here for us. He's so impersonable now. Uh huh. We've got years of messages stored. Cooper. Oh no. Hey, Dad. Oh. His name's Jesse. Say bye bye, Grandpa. Bye bye, Grandpa. Okay. Sorry, it's been a while. That's crazy. Oh. Oh, it's Jesse and all. Oh, did she die, dude? Hey. Oh, Grandpa died last week. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Jesse. Which is where I would have buried you if you'd ever come back. You know, maybe. No, nah, I'm good. I'm good. But that's just sad, man. Jeez. Oh no. Poor guy. Hey, Dad. You son of a bitch. I refuse. Refuse. I feel like I should live with that decision, and I have. But today is my birthday, and it's a special one because you told me. You once told me that when you came back, we might be the same age. Oh, and wow. Today, I'm the age you were when you left. This <laughs> might be a real good time for you to come back. Dang, she just dealt with that for that many years. Oh. I didn't mean to intrude. I'm not sure what I'm more afraid of. Them never coming back or coming back to find we've failed. Then let's succeed. Love that. Let's so, go. Let's run it through some new fields. With respect, Professor, we've tried that hundreds of times. Oh, she works for him. He has to work once. No. <laughs> I'm not afraid of death. I'm an old physicist. I'm afraid of time. <sighs> yeah, man, I done watched all the Michio Kaku videos, all the Neil deGrasse Tyson, the Lex Friedman podcast. I listen to all that nerdy stuff, man, so. I don't know about that. I, I like stuff. stuff like this. Are you calling my life's work nonsense, Mo? <laughs> <laughs> We no longer have the fuel to visit both so we have to choose oh no edmund's data is more promising we should vote well if we're going to vote there's something you should know brand what does she's in love with wolf edmunds yes oh, oh the gown okay so she wants to go because of her love interest mm -hmm. tars chart a course for dr mann i mean her science made sense right oh man is that corn burning? Yeah. About a third again. The next year. Is that Tom? 
Next year, I'm going to work Nelson's farm and I'll make it up. What happened to Nelson? He feels like he's losing his dad's farm. Well, ain't even his fault. Oh, it's, I have a friend who could look at his lungs. Hmm. <coughs> It's just not getting better. It's only getting worse. In the reality, this would be so much more horrific than they can portray in this movie. No, you got it so far. I'll finish what you started. Oh, man. About what? There was no need for you to come back. But hey, all these people. Wait, what? He never figured it out, I guess. Oh man. Brian, did you know? He told you, right? This was all a sham. That's why she loves that guy out there because she knew she wasn't coming back too. I guess so, yeah. That's why they're like the repopulation thing, no problem. That man was thinking like he needed all those people to get on board, but he just didn't believe that humans could ever actually do it. So he just thought that he should reseed the planet with those like transpermia and then lied to everybody. Oh no. What was that? Ice chunks? Frozen cloud. Whoa. That's what I really meant. A frozen cloud. The clouds are frozen yet that's crazy. How? I don't understand that. Whoa. I would be scared of some ice falling out the sky. Oh yeah. America. What if they didn't know guests were coming? So this planet is basically just busted, man. He's sleeping. Is he alive? Private Ryan. Good job, Captain. You found him. <laughs> you have no idea, man. He went into that thing just thinking like... It was over. He thought there's a 1% chance, even smaller than that, that someone's going to get me out of this. Because he could have done that too, and he didn't. The last time I went to sleep, I didn't even set a waking date. Wow. You have literally raised me from the dead. So he went He went wow. down thinking that was it. He yeah. basically offed himself. That is the others? nuts, dude. Dr. Man. Tell us about your world. Our world uh, is cold, stark, but undeniably beautiful. The days are 67 hours long, cold. Oh, wow. What's up with the sky, though? The gravity is a very, very pleasant 80% of the Earth. Wow. How far have you explored? Well, I've mounted several major expeditions, but with oxygen and limited supply, Kip there really did most of the legwork. <laughs> what went wrong with him, sir? Degeneration. Dr. Brand, I'm sorry to tell you that your father died today. He had no pain. Oh no. Brand, did you know? Shoot. Did my father know too? Dad? That's jacked up. Mm -hmm. He left me here to die. Mm -mm. I have no idea what she's talking about. I do. Yeah, explain it to me. Mm -hmm. well, he never even helped to get the people off the earth. No. Not even himself. Amelia, your father solved his equation before I even left. <sighs> you need to see into a black hole. The laws of nature prohibit a naked singularity. Probably is. Oh, that's, mm -hmm. they sent him in there. If a black hole is an oyster, then the singularity is the pearl inside. Right. Your father had to find another way to save the human race from extinction. Plan B, a colony. Why keep building those because stations? Because he, he knew how hard it would be to get people to work together to save the species instead of themselves. Wow. That's, yeah, that's insane, man. That's crazy. Unless you believed you were going to save them. It's kind of true, though. Yeah. That simple barrier. We, we can care deeply. It's just lie. Mm. Unforgivable. And he knew that. But he had to do it. By the people on Earth. You're gonna die because in his arrogance, we are the future. Wow. Let me go home. But you still got the mission though. This is sticky, isn't it? What are they hoping to find? Survival. It must be getting like real bad now. Yeah, they said your kids will be the last generation. Mm -hmm. well, people have a right to know. Panic won't help. See, now she has the same Isn't mentality that exactly as the Professor other. Brand was manipulating Brand us. Brand gave up on us. I'm still trying to solve this. Do you have an idea? Dude, how much dust is there? Did you see that? It's a chance for the people on Earth. Gargantua is an older spinning black hole. It's what we call a, a gentle singularity. Do you know what the singularity is, babe? It's where all the physics, it's the point in which all known physics breaks down. Mm. Referred to as a singularity. Are you charged? Yeah. Follow me. Cars. 72 hours, yeah? Roger that, Cooper. <laughs> Roger that, Cooper. I have to tell you, Dr. Man, I'm honored to be a part of this. I'm going home. Oh, he's going to look at his, the lungs. I got you. We kept the what? The son's lungs. How long have you had that cough? 
a while. Since the earth started dying. Just take this gently. Oh my. <laughs> what does research tell us is the last thing you're gonna see before you die? Your family. Your life? Your children. Oh. It's bad. They cannot stay here. When I left earth, I thought I was prepared to die. Oh man. Let's go. What the heck? What was that about? Why did he do that? I don't know. What is this? What are you doing? We cannot survive here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He wants to go home and that guy's like, nah, man, because he believes in the cause too much. Right. Oh, my. You have a responsibility. Bro. You faked all the data. Yes. Just to get the ship back? I guess so. There's no service. No. Oh, wow. I had to do my duty. I knew that if I just pressed that button, then somebody would come and save me. Oh, so he's trying to be saved. Yeah, he didn't want to die on that planet alone. He wants to get out of there now. And it was his idea. I mean, this is gonna... Wait, what are they gonna accomplish right now? Y'all are about to exhaust yourselves. You're gonna wait for your next kid to die. Oh, Jesse. Don't come back. I mean, man, I'd be out of there ASAP. Oh, no! <laughs> Man, there's a 50-50 chance you're gonna kill yourself. Oh my gosh. Whose helmet is it? Cooper's. I was gonna say, how is that guy not crazy? He would never test it like I was. Few men have been. Oh god. That was quotable. Few men have been. That was crazy. I'm sorry, I can't I can't watch you go through this. I'm sorry. I thought I could. <laughs> what the heck? Do you see your children? Dude, just shut up. Go. Do not go gentle into that good night. Oh, the plug. Ooh, the frostbite. Help! 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 Cooper? Man, he's about to die out there. Oh, she's going to go get him. I do not understand this world at all. Like, what's up with this thing? Tell your sir. What is she? Oh, she's setting his farm on fire. <laughs> oh, to get him to come? We gotta go faster. He's gonna go faster, 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 faster. Come on. Oh, he's just thinking about the memories with his daughter. Because he's dying. Hang in there. Come on. Look at that wind howling just to add so much drama. I see him. I see him. I see him. Oh, he's that guy in the car is like, what the heck's happening? Oh, golly. Lower. This data makes no sense. Man. Lying. Villain. A guy in an impossible situation. Right. He's not really a villain, but I feel you. Don't don't <gasps> what? Keep watch. Robbley. Dr. Brand, Cooper, there's been an explosion. Dr. Man's compound. All he saw was weird data, because he caught on to the guy's lie. He thinks he's getting out sky clean. Well, he thinks he's saving humanity, though, you know? Yeah. It seemed like he was, like, trained for that, Tars, like... Tars, 10 o'clock. Or something. Let's go, buddy. Oh, did not survive. Oh, man. Oh, if he takes control of that ship, we're dead. Oh, he is marooning us. He marooned him. Go wait by the car. Whatever that means. He doesn't know the endurance docking procedure. Well, the autopilot does. Not since Tars disabled it. <laughs> Good not job, Tars. Not the time Tars. for that. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Not Docking, I repeat, do not attempt docking. Please respond. Oh, of course he did. Oh, the watch. He's not going to be able to, though, right? Auto docking sequence withheld. Right. Override. Unauthorized. Their docker Override. got washed away, remember? Unauthorized. Do not attempt docking. Please respond. Can't hear you, Coop. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh man, that was crazy when you put it that way. That's like batching the hit, back in the hitch up just right. Mm -mm. Oh man. Oh no. Imperfect contact. Override. What's gonna happen to this dude? Is he locked on yet? Imperfectly. Dr. Man, do not. Bro, if you ain't locked on, don't open it. Oh no. He's probably gonna breathe some like bad air, right? Hatch lockout disengaged. 
I repeat, do not oh, yeah. open the hatch. What happened in uh the hatch. If you open the hatch, the Guardians of the Galaxy when you open up the hatch, you got sucked out, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because that thing goes on there and screws, right? Doctor Man, listen to me. This is not about my life or Cooper's life. This is about all mankind. There is a moment. Oh, oh shoot. that scared the mess out of me, dude. Oh no, man. Oh man. He destroyed it for everybody, brother. Ah. Oh. Oh <sighs> Is it coming towards them? You better go down or up or something. Wow. There's no point using her fuel to analyze the endurance of spin. Oh, he's about to do his little trick where he doesn't have to what use the fuel. Docking. Oh no, shot. What are you talking about? It's not possible. No, it's necessary. But hang on, Coop. Let's take a vote. <laughs> There's two left. Yeah, they ain't got a, they ain't got a chance though. Endurance is hitting stratosphere. Oh, you better hurry up. This thing's about to blow up, dude. She's got no heat shield. Hey, you ready? Ready. Stars, you're ready to engage the docking mechanism. Let's go. Let's go. Starting to heat. Initiating spin. Who knew a farmer could do that? Right. Come on, Tars. Tars is up there with Jarvis, ain't he? Mm-hmm. One of my robot goats. Oh, let's go. You're almost there. Retro thrusters. When I hear retro thrusters, I think of like some groovy thrusters. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> What's that? It's like they were in like a wig and they're like <laughs> pushing out of orbit. Come on, baby. Okay, we're out of orbit. Let's go. And for our next trick. <laughs> that was wild, dude. Don't have to be good. Red that thing was slingshotting around and they still managed to dock it. Cooper, we're slipping towards Gargantua. Shall I use main engines? Better. No. Oh god. We're gonna let us slide as far as we can. Mm -mm. Always cutting it close. We don't have enough life support to make it back to Earth, but I think we can scratch our way to Edmund's planet. Well, what about fuel? Not enough. So they're not going home, That's basically. We let Gargantua pull us down close to the horizon, then a powered slingshot around, launching us towards Edmund's planet. Yeah, that settled a long time ago. Why does Tars have to detach? Oh, we have to shed the weight to escape the gravity. Nah. The third law. The only way humans have ever figured out of getting somewhere is to leave something behind. I, mean, I guess it's just a robot. You can just back them up. Tries to do this for us. It's our only chance to save people on Earth. I'm rooting for you, girl. <laughs> right. These visuals in this movie, guys, they really are some of the best. Some of the best I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, just, I agree. I, I didn't want to interrupt the movie at any point to point that out, but man. That worked. They're feeling the effects of that gravity, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh no. That's crazy, man. Lander one, prepare to detach. Mark. Detach. Goodbye, Tars. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Doctor. See you on the other side, Coop. See you there, Slick. Good job, Tars. I know you're just a robot and you're not really sentient, okay, but I like you. Ranger two. Prepare to detach. What? No, you told me we had enough resources for both of us. Oh, so he ain't going. What? Detach. He's falling into the black hole, bro. Oh man, he's sending her. Okay. I know who down. So he's sending her to Edmonds, and oh my goodness. Approaching the event horizon. To go through it. You see everything just collapsing. Blackness. Oh, she's losing signal. It's all black. Wow. Oh, man. Tars, do you read me over? I always thought you'd get stretched out like spaghetti if you went in a black hole. Really? That's what I always heard. <laughs> I honestly never thought about it. Losing control stick, got the flashes. The turbulence in the gravity is increasing. Computer's going down. All right. He's about to implode. Gravitational pull, I'm losing control of the stick. Oh my. He 
He's just in a freaking black hole right now with no spaceship or nothing. Oh man, you're going out like a cowboy, bro. What is that? You're just gonna. Oh, fall. we made it out the other side. I think. <gasps> what the heck? Is he in the black hole? I have no idea. I'm really confused, guys. I'm so sorry. I was following along until now. Maybe he's dead and this is like where you go when you die if you're an astronaut. It's a bookshelf. Right, a library bookshelf. So he's inside of a black hole. She heard it. Is that him later? The, that's her intuition. It's the book. Oh, he knocked the books off the shelf. But how? Like, where is he at? I don't know. That's all those moments she had when she was a little girl was him. Trying to communicate with her, right? And now she's over there. Because there was like a code, remember? <laughs> Bro, what is going on right now? Okay, so he's seen her there. I remember that day. That's him. Oh, man. It's like he's seeing go. flashes go of his here. life or something. Don't go. Right. He told him don't go, remember? And she said that the letter said stay. Morse code. S. T. Hey. Why? Stay! That's what he wrote. And she didn't listen. I mean, he didn't listen to her. Oh, Murph. Murph. But if he would have listened to her, he would have never been there. Right. What's this? Good thing she wasn't picking her nose. Smartest 10 year old ever. Right now, he thinks that he's. I don't know where he thinks he's at. He's probably just completely like mind effed right now. There's him. Make a mistake. She did her best. Make a mistake, Murph. He was hard headed, dude. <laughs> yeah. Don't let me leave, Murph. Oh my god. No! 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 That was that book. Oh man. Cause it fell at the last minute. <laughs> Bro, I didn't know Matthew McConaughey crying can make me feel so sad. It was you. I figured it out. Oh he's my in gosh. a he's in a wormhole. He's outside of space and time. That's so point he's of communicating. But I don't know where the hell he's at. I don't get what this is. But he's somehow outside of space and time so he can communicate or something. But I don't know what this whole thing is at all. Or maybe he's dead. Somewhere in their fifth dimension, they saved us. What the hell is they? They constructed this three-dimensional space inside their five-dimensional reality to allow you to understand it. You've seen that time is represented here as a physical dimension. Wow. Gravity can cross the dimensions, including time. They said that in the movie. So he said they, inside of the black hole, is you break space time, you are in the fifth dimension. So they constructed something inside of their dimension to represent his dimension. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Kinda. I don't really get what I'm trying to say, but I get what I'm trying to say. I get I get where this movie's going. It's just so hard for me to interpret the information through my ears out of my mouth. Do you have the quantum data? They didn't bring us here to change the past. Well, they didn't bring us here at all. Wait, what? We brought ourselves. Because it started Our, there, maybe? Could be the coordinates for now. Oh, no. In binary. Oh, those lines. This is kind of crazy, guys. Like, once I actually understand this a little bit more, this is going to blow my mind. It's gravity. I brought myself here. We're here to communicate with a three dimensional world. We're the bridge. Oh, wow. They didn't choose me, they chose her. For what, Cooper? To save the world. Well, go ahead. Go. All of this is one little girl's bedroom. Every moment they can't communicate. I'm going to find a way to tell Murph. Just like I found this moment. We love Tar's love. It's the key. You still following along, baby? Yeah. We code the data into the movement of the second hand. That's why I was sitting there like this. Man, that girl is smart, boy. Translate the data into Morse and feed it to me. Cooper, what if she never came back for it? She will. Because she loves her dad so much. Mm -hmm. Roger Morse's dot dot dash dot. Bro, what in the hell? That's why the watch when she picked it up was like. Jer. He's sitting there manipulating the time to give her a message. Yeah, he's doing it in like binary. Earl Jones Jr. hopping out the truck over here. 
Smart people, man. Brilliant. I know I would have been smacking that thing up, trying to get it to work right. <laughs> and I hope she made a copy. <laughs> <laughs> Did it work? I think it might have. Because the bulk beams are closing the Tesseract. The Tesseract? Cooper people couldn't build this. A civilization that's evolved past the four dimensions we know. Wow. I never thought about evolving past four dimensions. Me I thought about evolving into like a multi-planetary species, but... They probably built the pyramids. Oh man, he's seeing that that thing still exists in space-time, outside of space-time. That's who she waved at. Unbelievable, man. My man made it back to the freaking solar system. Mr. Cooper. He made it back. Take it slow, sir. Actually, you are 124 years old. Whoa. You were uh, extremely lucky. The they saved Earth. With only minutes left in your oxygen supply. Do you know what that is? That's like a halo ring. Whoa. It's a it's a big thing that floats through space and spins to create artificial gravity. Cooper Station. It was named after him. Orbiting Saturn. Cooper Station. What a nice you to name it after me. <laughs> the station isn't named after you, sir. It's uh it's named after your daughter. Oh wow. She's still alive. She'll be here in a couple weeks. She's alive? This is Murphy Cooper we're talking about. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Wow. Does that make you feel sad, baby? I didn't see what's in store. I did a paper on you. In high school, I know all about your life back on Earth. <laughs> Bet you do. And of course, I, I didn't speak to her personally. They recreated it, man. That's crazy. Oh, well, no, the, doc the documentary's playing in everything, too, so it's like a monument. Home sweet home. Everything replaced and put back right. He felt for That's the obviously dust. a replica. Right. right. Okay. He's on Phil for the dust. There's nothing. Saturn, when we found you, yes. Settings. General setting. <laughs> Honesty, new setting, 95%. <laughs> Auto self destruct, T minus 10, 9. Let's make that 60. <laughs> <laughs> Is this really Aww. what it was like? I was never this clean, slick. <laughs> the view's a little different. Mr. Cooper, the family's all in there. What a big family she had. How was your ghost? I know. People didn't believe me. They thought that I was doing it all myself, but oh, I knew who it was. Nobody believed me, but I knew you'd come back. Now, this music, dude, is too much. Because of you okay, baby? Me. I'm here now, Mark. I'm here. Look at the dynamic. He just has so much admiration and respect. No parent should have. Brand, the doctor, she's the professor. I mean, setting up camp. I feel like y'all are sneaking in. Alone. Look at that beautiful planet. Galaxy. Oh no. That's so sad, man. Maybe right now she's settling in for the long nap. He's done his purpose. His daughter's lived a long life. Now he gets to go just be free and do what he loves, man. By the light of our new sun. That's crazy. The first human to survive. Because he's just out there breathing. In our new home. Oh, wow. 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 Man. What an awesome story. Okay, guys. So sometimes in life, you sit down to watch a movie and you come away just... Uh, mind blown inspired uh emotion you know emotional um slightly confused and hopeful really i mean what an amazing movie i mean that Absolutely. really hit every element you could possibly think of babe on a scale from one to ten what'd you rate this movie 400 <laughs> it was so good was it one of the best movies we've seen on this channel absolutely i mean hands down right yeah, it's gotta it be so, so good okay do you want to try to break this movie down and get into like the science behind it and stuff I know you want to. <laughs> it's going to be difficult, man. Um, guys, we're not going to try to take too long on this movie. Uh, I think anything I add to it ultimately is just going to be dumbing it down. And I'm probably going to say some things that are probably inaccurate and 
That way, can I just say what I feel about it first then? <laughs> Absolutely, okay. yeah, please. Okay, before we get into like, you know, the stuff that he cares about, <laughs> I'm gonna talk about what I cared about in this Go movie, ahead. which is the family part of it. Um, and just like I guess the way the way she said that love was the like universal language pretty much in a in an off in a different way. But like dimensions are one thing, but love is another. And basically, no matter what, love is gonna like, you know, prevail in the end. It's gonna is going to prevail. And I feel like that movie not only displayed that in like different relationships with brand with brand with him and with brand with Edmonds. Um, and then with his daughter Murph, like that was just honestly the best. That was the best story I've ever seen and expressing it through, you know, space and stuff like that is unique to me. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I thought the visuals were stunning. The storyline's amazing. One of the best movies I've seen. Right. I would arguably say definitely top three. You like post-apocalyptic a lot. Yeah, I do. And this had a splash of it for sure. So so good. <laughs> so good. I want more like that for sure. Uh, they might not have any more like that. <laughs> but um, Christopher Nolan, I trust you now. I'm going to I'm gonna watch more movie, of your stuff. Right? Unbelievable. I mean, dude, like, I'm just the type of guy who, honestly, I go to bed and I put on a podcast about just space or whatever the case may be. And obviously, this movie has been approached like in those subjects and stuff. And they've talked about this movie, but, um, never understood it. And I really knew I always sort of didn't really listen to that much because I haven't seen the movie, but now that I'm, I'm looking out for that in the future. Cause they do talk about this movie in physics a lot. Cause I guess it's a, a visual representation of a lot of, I guess, truths in physics, I guess. Anyways, guys, the movie was pretty incredible. So the story went basically humanity was on his last brink. The planet was dying and they dropped, a random wormhole in close to Saturn, close enough to where humans can reach it uh, by linear flight, right? From going from point A to point B. Um, they get there, they go inside the wormhole, they pop out on the other side of the universe, wherever the case may be, and they start ex exploring planets, much like that game No Man's Sky, man, and they're just looking for a candidate. And in the end, she found one. And what was really amazing is they would have never been able to have that data and everything wouldn't have worked out the way it was if it wasn't for the future self coming back and speaking to itself. And apparently future humans built this place. Dude, I don't know, man. This is tough, guys. Just bear with me, man, because this is a lot. But I'm thinking what from what I gathered from it, man, future humans came and built this magical little place called the Tesseract, which is something from Marvel, I thought. But they built this place called the Tesseract. And... Everything that's ever happened in space and time, because space and time is linear and it, it's it's not. I know it moves like this and it's like. Basically everything that happens in space and time, like just because like, say you break your arm. Well, in three months from now, it's not like your arm isn't still being broke right now. It's just that you've moved on linearly through time. So there was this place inside their five dimensional place that existed where a human could see it and understand it. And it showed all 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 times of space at once you get what i'm trying to say it's very complicated guys i don't know i'm kind of mind blown by the idea right now but apparently he was able to just see every everything that was happening all at once just however he wanted to perceive it because he was outside of space and time and ultimately he came and communicated with his daughter but the reason i'm struggling so much guys is because there's one issue that i just thought about and i don't really know how to address it but if he had to, if the timeline had to occur for him to get to that point where he was able to eventually get to the higher dimension to speak to himself outside of space and time, how did he originally, for the first time, like in base reality, get to that point without him already being there to help him along the way? It's like the old paradox. If you go back in time and kill your grandfather, how did you come into existence if your grandfather was killed before you were ever born? Oh, right? yeah. That's when you start getting like multiple realities and stuff like that. And that's when it breaks down even further. <laughs> that's so. what it looked like to me, like on Doctor Strange, when you see all those like right, things yeah. open. That's what that Tesseract thing looked like to me. I don't I'm not going to get too caught up in the here, or the how when it comes to that Tesseract place. Um, from what I'm from, what I'm seeing, man, is like I can sit there and try to understand that all day. Basically, what I'm what I'm getting from it is future humans that are a lot more advanced and who are a lot more capable of understanding the construction of that place. They handled that, and unfortunately, unfortunately for me, I don't have to worry about it. I'm just chilling. So. Right. So they were just trying to like send a message to themselves to save 
humanity. But humans from the future save themselves. So how did they save themselves to get to the future to save themselves? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Right. That's sort of the issue know. with it for me. But there's probably some type of a paradox that I'm not considering here. There's definitely something that I'm considering because like you can't because according to Einstein's uh, laws of physics, you can't hypothetically move backwards and in time only forwards hypothetically physics allows for time travel into the future but not into the past guys i'm gonna have to go watch one of those videos that probably breaks this down for me i'm not even gonna lie man i thought i'd be smart enough to understand it and i think to somewhat i sort of got it and i think if i watched it a couple times i would understand it a little more well can you but, like talk about it? then if that's the case can we talk about it like on like the base level like the storyline kind of level instead of the scientific way like what do you think like oh yeah i didn't even approach that did i what do you think like based off like this this situation the task at hand like you're up there you're saving humanity then there's like the other contrast of it which was like that soldier who was portrayed by private ryan who was someone who was like their mission was to save humanity no matter what no matter the case when people like matthew mcconaughey are trying to like interfere you take them out because you're trying to save humanity so what do you yeah. think what's your like moral thing ultimately about it was just like the most it was one of the most it was just one of the most extreme examples of like what would you do if you're tasked with an impossible situation so i mean if you're thinking big picture like transpermia you know like if if our, if our planet was going to die and i you know if i knew there was no saving our our you know if there was no saving everybody man of course i would want to like spread out the cosmos and like create new humans and seed the galaxies of course right. i'd want to do that but would i want to do that to if, a whole planet right would i would i be willing to <laughs> dedicate my time all my precious time I got left, right? Because the planet's going to eventually end. We're all going to die. So I've got one life to live, right? And that's just so heavy. So do I dedicate all my time, giving it all of my effort to save the species? Or do I take, which isn't really a selfish approach, but it really creates sort of a paradigm here. Because in a sense, it can be considered selfish. Like the selfish thing to do in that situation could be to stay home and care about your family. But at the same time, from your family's perception, like from your kid's perception, like, the most unselfish thing you could do is to, I don't know, man, it's tough, man. So I just thought the story was good. And I thought that the little girl didn't have a choice and it was just a story where no one really had a choice, but I'm glad that there was somebody that was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice, I guess, because I guess in this movie, what it really went to show you was time is very valuable. Like time mm -hmm. is relative, you know, time's always there in a sense. And it's always going to be there, especially when you break outside of our dimension, Yeah, you know, but when you're inside this dimension, man, it's extremely, extremely valuable. I mean, it's really ultimately all we're given. You right. know, there's only so many things in life you own. Like you don't own your house, you don't really own your car, you don't own anything. You own your conscience, your soul, and your and your time. I mean, that's it. That's about all you got. So that's what like I took away from this movie. Yeah, most, man, is like I, the time, how valuable it is, but how like much it really matters. But also like all those dimensions are one thing, but like love conquers all. Well, love literally, you know, like if I was trying to go into a higher dimension and explain a Coke bottle, you know, I might have a hard time, but you would imagine there is a universal concept of love. I mean, it's one of our, it's our species contribution to the universe. I mean, like lots of animals can eat and jump and, you know, planets can spin, I can spin, but ultimately like we're capable of love and that's something that's so much, we're just not capable of understanding it. I mean, maybe you disagree, but I don't think it's just a chemical reaction. I think there's something a lot more deeper rooted in reality. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's that simple. So apparently it transcends multiple dimensions and human intuition, uh, the love, the bond between a father and a daughter is ultimately what ended up saving the species. And maybe, maybe when he went into not necessarily, not, he doesn't go into the future in the movie though. So like, it's very tempting to say, Oh, well he went into the future, but he didn't go into the future. He just exited space and time. He didn't so went to not, that Tesseract thing, right? Right. Yeah. So maybe he knew intuitively that no matter what, I could try to get this message across in a million ways, but the only thing that's really going to guarantee, like my best bet, which is a theme in the movie they were talking about, was I'm going to bet on the fact that my daughter loves me so much that her sympathies will eventually draw her back to that house, to that last place we had to memories. To that watch, yeah. Before it's too late. Right. Do you get what I'm saying? And he just trusted the fact that he like loved her and like, and I, I mean, he kind of prepared her in a weird way. He prepared her for like, he, he taught her how to be like really like intuitive about that kind of stuff and right. smart about it. So it's kind of weird when you think about it from that, because maybe he was sending himself messages that we didn't get to see necessarily. But I don't know. I mean, and then obviously it had 
just a very just a very good theme in it too that a lot of people probably don't really realize in it but i mean it was basically just dude just keep going man keep fighting you know like the little girl could have just powdered her life away i mean she had every every reason to say like the universe is against me like mm. literally my planet's right. trying to suffocate me it's destroying the the soil that we use to grow the crops uh, and she felt like her dad just was going up there and abandoning her to and, die there. And instead of just wallowing about it, I mean, she went on to become, I mean, she, she went on to basically save the planet, man. And I mean, ultimately, and that's what it's going to take. Like if something like that happens, guys, it's not going to be necessarily like some big government program, whatever the case may be. It's just going to come down to individuals who have deep motivations and who are just very smart and are just capable. I mean, and at the it, end it of the day, you know, that like, in the movie, like when he said, that he has to pick a father because they're clinging on to life for their children. So, like, that was the motivation needed for that. Yeah, it, absolutely. It was, um, what was his name? Private Ryan, the guy who plays Private Ryan. He's the yeah. one who kind of, like, put that thought out there. It just sucks, man, because this is such a good movie. And there's probably so many themes that we're missing. There's probably so many parts of this movie that just completely went over my head. I just I want to take a moment to say the visuals in this movie was phenomenal. Uh, the framing in this movie was phenomenal. I, I really appreciated the way they framed the shots. I don't know, man. Just the way they used the frame, the way they framed the actors in the shots to create like mm -hmm. contrast and the symmetry and stuff was really unique in this movie. Um, there How was, there was no sound with explosions. I love that. The I expected space. Yeah, it. Yeah. I expected it. So I was like, <clears throat> low key bracing myself for them. Right. Well, it's the same reason you can't set off like an atomic bomb in the middle of space and expect a result. I mean, it's a vacuum yeah. ultimately. So. You know, there's no vibrations and stuff. So just phenomenal, man. Amazing color grade. The music. Oh, man, the music. Uh, you know, it made so much. It made it so much more emotional and like heartfelt. And that's something else I want to address, guys. Like when I watch things like this that are just heartfelt, make me feel good, but, you know, hurt my feelings at the same time. It makes me feel really good to like have other people experience that with me, too, because for like a moment in time, we're just happy. We're just like we're good people and we're feeling something good. We're wholesome. I mean, we're together well in that there, way. Man. Uh, yeah, watching a movie like this is humbling because you really realize we are just a tiny, tiny little marble in an ocean, man. And all, you know, all it would take is just something just all it would take is one asteroid, dude. One asteroid and humanity's gone forever. It's changed forever. Uh, there's just one solar flare. You know, we're back to the Stone Age, man. And it, it really is humbling because you know, dude, it could literally happen tomorrow. I mean, it could happen before this video comes out, seriously. And it's just, it's crazy to think. I've heard about a lot of these concepts. I've appreciated thinking about a lot of these concepts. You know, I, I do find this thing to be like the ultimate height of fascination. You know, I really don't think many things are more interesting than like these type of things, like philosophy, science, physics, uh, stuff like that, man, quantum mechanics, things of that nature. And they're just interesting. What's interesting about them is ultimately because you know, even though some people take them so serious and they are to be taken serious, they're so much fun. I mean, it's yeah. like doing puzzles and it's like just like thinking about paradoxes. It's like the first time you're really just mind blown about something, right. you know, like <laughs> it, I mean, so good. I'm definitely intrigued, but this is something that lights him up. He's passionate about it. It's fun. So just thank you, Patreon. Like you yeah, guys knew dope, exactly guys. what cool. he was into. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah, you guys voted yeah. for it because y'all said that I would definitely want to see and it. And you said I would like it. Plus, because right. it's an awesome movie. Yeah, let's not be naive about that. <laughs> right. Um. Guys, like, subscribe, hit us up on Patreon. Like I said in the intro, we're definitely going to have this whole thing on there uh, uncut. So if you guys want to see the full link and just join us over there, man. Even if you guys want to join for free, there's a free option. You don't have to pay any money. Just join for free, man. Just because if you join for free, I think you can still take part in like the polls and the votes and things like that. And you guys can just see what we're posting and stuff like that. So and you guys are freaking spot on and y'all know what we like. Let's go. That job was great, man. If, if we missed anything, guys, I'm so sorry. When I lay down to go to bed now, I am going to put on like an interstellar explain. And Add it see. below. Add it below. I yeah. want to see it all. I want to read it all. There's just a couple things. I felt like I, I genuinely feel like I understood the movie, but I, I felt like going into the movie, I would understand it. Um, if I was someone who was not familiar with the concept, like, 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 for example, like to me, knowing Murphy's Law is almost as easy as you knowing what like kerosene is or something. You know what I'm saying? It's just very intuitive to me. But if I was not familiar with these concepts, I don't think I could have kept up with that. I thought so, Murphy's Law was a band. I'm really proud of you for keeping up with that. You know what I'm saying? I thought you did a really good job. But that's because um, of you, because and because guys, I'm kind of brainwashed. I have to listen to these crazy podcasts. <laughs>
they're not crazy he didn't hear okay? that they're, it's, they're not crazy they're theoretical okay all right guys thank you guys so much man for real uh i don't even want to get off the mic guys because this movie was just so good it's like, like i feel you know that feeling of lord of the rings when then like you just yeah, feel yeah, happy exactly, and you're exactly. like this moment only exactly. happens once i only got to watch interstellar for the first time one freaking time right. and i'll never get to rewatch it for the first time ever again and i don't want to leave yeah we definitely understand that like some of you guys are really into some movies like when you know like the original tarzan disney movie could possibly be your favorite movie man you might put that movie on and just get so freaking hyped that you want to jump out the window but i think it's a pretty good movie too soundtrack's awesome but it doesn't quite do it for me like that but i think we can all universally recognize that when it comes to a movie like interstellar these movies are just once in a lifetime and uh we knew it'd probably be like that going in because everybody was so passionate about wanting us to watch this and I, I enjoyed it guys that's the biggest message i have is i really appreciated it i enjoyed it that was dope patreon you can always vote if you're gonna vote things like this all right guys we'll see you on the next one